Hello, everyone. It is my great honor to introduce our new application, Inventory Management System, to you. This application uses Berkeley DB as the underlying storage, and it can run on any Windows OS, which has installed Microsoft.NET Framework 2.0 or greater. There are two versions of Windows Installer provided for users. The one in the directory x64 is for 64-bit OS, and the other in the directory x86 is for 32-bit OS. In this video, I choose the one in the directory x64 to install. After we double-click the installer, there will be a setup wizard created to guide us through the installation. We click Next, and then we can change the installation folder here. I choose the default location and click Next again. Then the installation starts. During the installation, there may be a message box saying that do you want to allow the following program from an unknown publisher to make any changes to this computer? Please choose yes here. After a few seconds, the installation finishes, and we click close to exit the setup wizard. Now, there will be a shortcut created on your desktop, and we can launch this application by double-clicking it. Once the application is launched for the first time, there will be a new directory named IMS Home created on your desktop. This directory includes all DB files and all log files. Now, let us find out what this application can do for us. There are three main tabs in this application. Tab Inventory, Tab Sales Log, and tab Pattern Discoverer. The Inventory tab provides all the functions we need to deal with the inventory items. The Sales Log tab allows us to look up and handle sales log and get the summary of daily sales. And the Pattern Discoverer will find sales patterns based on items or time. I'd like to introduce the tab Inventory at first. There are four sub-tabs here. Look up an item, add a new item, add a new vendor, and add a new category. Now, let me demonstrate how they work. I'll add some new categories first. I take clothes and food as example here. Note that, as different categories usually have different extra attribute sets, a textbook is designed for the extra attribute names. For example, we'll fill color, size for clothes, while we fill date for food. Then, I'll add some new vendors in the tab at a new vendor. Let me create two vendors here. Please make sure the vendor name here is different with that of any other vendor which already exists. Now, we can add some new item in the tab Add a new item. At first, I need to select the category for this new item. Please note that when I select a different category, the extra attribute set here will change accordingly. I'd like to select clothes here. Then I feel SKU, item name, price, quantity, vendor name, and extra attribute. We have to make sure that the SKU here is unique. Besides, the vendor name here should match one of the vendors which already exist. Otherwise, you should add this vendor first. Finally, we can look up, update, or delete items and vendors in the tab Look up an item. Items can be searched by item name or SKU here. Since every item has a different SKU, looking up by SKU may be better. If we leave this textbook blank, 
and clean search will get all the items here with the total number of records. At the same time, we can update or delete items directly from here. Please note that the update of SKU or vendor is not allowed. Now, I'll update the price, the quantity, and the extra attribute side of the first item. Click the button Update Item. OK, it's done. Then, I'll delete the second item here. Click the button Delete Item, and then the record is deleted permanently. The research, update, and deletion of vendors work the same way, except that the update of vendor name is not allowed. Then, let's move on to the second main tab, Sales Log. There are three sub-tabs under this main tab. Look up Sales Log, add a new sales record, and a daily sales summary. I will add some sales records here. Please make sure the SKU here already exists. Otherwise, you will be asked to add the item for the SKU first. And it is permitted that the price here is different from the price in the item record. If we leave the textbook of sales time blank, the system uses current time as the sales time for this sales record. If we fill the textbook with a wrong time format, the system will give us a warning. The string is not a valid time. Now, we can look up sales log in the tab, look up sales log. Once we select start date and end date, fill an SKU and click go, we'll find all the sales log from the specified item from the start date to the end date. Leaving the textbook of SKU blank means searching for all the sales log of all the items during the period. Meanwhile, there is a total number for the fund records, and there is a gross profit calculated from all these records. The update for the sales log is not committed, but we can delete any fund sales log directly by clicking the button Delete. Please note that when we add a new sales log for some item, the quantity of the item will be reduced according to the sold quantity in a sales log. But deletion of sales log will never bring the reduced amount back. We can also delete all the sales log during some period here, and this will be demonstrated later. Now, let's go to the tab Daily Sales Summary. After specifying the sales date and clicking Go, we can get all the gross sales data for all the categories. And there is a total gross sales calculated for all the sales on that day. What's more, we can get all the sold out items here for current date. Let me add some sales records to make some items sold out. OK, we get to record now. Once we click the button of the record, we can get the detailed information of the vendor and then connect the vendor to replenish our stock. It's time to show the tab Pattern Discoverer. There are two sub-tabs here, Pattern Based on Item and Pattern Based on Time. Let's go into the tab Pattern Based on Time first. From here, we can find the best selling item for each category from the start date to the end date. As for tab pattern based on time, we can find the sales peak for a specified item. The system divides a whole day into 24 sales periods. Once we specify an SKU and click go, the system will tell us the period when the sales peak appears. Now, we can delete all the sales log in the tab Lookup Sales Log. We select the start date 
and the end date, then click Go. All the fields log are deleted permanently. If you want to debug this application with Visual Studio, please refer to the instructions in the README file. That's all. Thank you for watching.